Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a deep dive into Toyota accessory switches. We're going to be talking about replacing the bulbs in your factory switches. We're going to talk about replacing the switches entirely with those super popular aftermarket ones that say different things. We're going to be talking about the wiring, wiring diagrams, and we're going to be figuring out why it is that you cannot wire one of those up and have the indicator light work correctly with the OEM fog lights. So if you're curious about all of this, let's jump right in. So here's what we're working with. As you can see, I have all my switches out. There they are on the ground. You're going to take the little compartment door, you're going to pull it down and then pull out on it and it's going to unhook. And then down in here, there's a fuse box back there, which thank goodness Toyota, you put the diagram on the lid. I absolutely love that and VW does not do that. Then you're going to have all these switches. So take a little bit of fishing line wrap it around then with the door open it's going to be hard to see but there's a divider in between you see that black plastic in there between the gray and the black section so you can't just put your hand up through here it's blocked you have to go up through here and then all the way through can't even see my fingers squeeze your hand up there and then you can just barely get a finger on the back side while you take the fishing wire this one's already loose and then pull It'll pop out and then you'll be able to unhook the connectors. I already have the connectors that go to this section are pulled down here. And then the connectors that go to these two are these ones right here. Just little simple push in connectors right there. And I have one of the connectors, you can see all these leads here. I was doing my wiring testing and that's what's going on down here is this is that connector and this is one of those aftermarket connectors and unfortunately what I thought was going to be a simple one-to-one -one wiring did not turn out to be that way so we're going to dive into that next. I will say you can take all of this apart if you want better access as well but you have to take trim off, you have to take this piece off, there's stuff under there, bolts and all this. That's why I'm just kind of working my hands up through that hole there. I don't want to do all that. Let's talk about the switches. Toyota switches, incredibly simple just clicks in and out. It has a light that comes on when you turn your headlights on like at night and then it varies depending on what setting you have that the dash circuit on. So we've got a bulb, we've got a switch. I'm purposefully pausing here to show you how simple this is. The bulbs are over there. You can see you can just screw them in and out and replace them. We'll talk about that later. And the switch is a switch. Okay, now let's go over to these aftermarket switches. They're not so simple anymore. You still have four wires, but you also have an indicator light, whether it's on or not, and then you still have that backlight that comes on with your headlights. If you take one of these apart, there's the circuit board in there, which is how I figured all this out. You can just pry up on, you pry out on these, and then down here, this will come off. You can also just pull hard on that. That'll pop out. You can take it all apart. Not really any reason to, though. So now we have a switch, we have diodes. So here is how these are intended to be wired. You're supposed to hook up black to ground, or the colors could be different depending on the vendor you bought them from, but we have a ground, we have a positive input from the battery or whatever, or a fuse. We've got the switch here, which when you shut it, then the current can flow through and go to whatever accessory you're powering. You need to use a relay because this, I mean, look at this thing. You can't run a lot of amps through this, okay? So you gotta use a relay for anything other than a tiny LED. And then also some of this current can also go through this diode and then to ground, which will light up the little indicator. And then we have the dash backlight, which is either just a positive or a variable positive. And then that comes in and that lights up the whatever the words are for when you have your headlights on. You can read it at night and things. This is how you're supposed to set it up. Very simple, okay? We've got positive input. We've got positive output to your relay. We've got backlight and we've got ground. So pull the curtain over here. This is how Toyota has wired the fog light circuit. And I'm going to guess this is probably how they wire everything. It's a lot different, okay? Even though it looks the same, it's four wires, it's a lot different. We've got the bulb here for the backlighting of the switch, 
and that is powered with a consistent 12 volt. And then it grounds through a variable uh, 0 to 12 volt, I'm assuming they're just using a potentiometer or whatever, which is this little guy right here that you switch how bright the backlights are and all that. But what we're dealing with is a variable, I'm going to call it a ground, but a variable um, connection. And then you have, notice where the relay is, the positive is already flowing through the relay, or uh, through the coil of the relay, and then the switch just grounds the relay. Over here, you have your relay, you have your positive coming in to the relay, and then the relay grounds to ground. Over here, it grounds through the switch. Now, this is going to cause problems when we try and wire that to work with this. But that's how this is. It's in fuse box over here. I've pulled the fuse, but you've got all the power for all of those fuses and, and that, and then power for the relays, and the relay grounds through the switch. And then you've got your backlight, which it isn't a ground and a variable source. It is a constant 12 volt source and a variable ground. So that's weird. So how do we make this work with this is what we're going to discuss next, but instead of drawing it out, because there's too many ways of trying, I'm just going to show you virtually. A relay is a simple device that allows you to control a high power output using a low power input signal. If you don't have enough voltage going to a relay, what happens is then there isn't enough current going through those coils to create that magnetic field to shut the switch. We already discussed it on the cardboard, now let's take it into the real world using a modeling app called iCircuit. So we've got, this is how the switches are supposed to be wired, the aftermarket switches. We have the 12 volt input to the switch, then we have the 12 volt output going to a downstream relay, and we have the indicator LED for if it's on or not, and then we have the backlight LED, which in all these examples we're gonna assume is on, as well as that I'm representing the potentiometer, that variable ground, so to speak, with a two volt uh, potential right there. So we turn the switch on, energy goes, the current goes through both the diode as well as the coil of the relay, shutting the relay. That works just as intended. So now let's rearrange this and look at it a little bit differently to understand it better. We're going to get rid of that backlighting circuit. We don't need that right now. We're going to move this around, and then we're going to move this around a little bit, and we're going to move the relay around. Now when you look at it this way, what do we see is that these two elements are in parallel to each other, the relay as well as that resistor diode indicator combo. They are in parallel to each other. One's going down this way and the other one's going out this way. And here's the problem with the OEM wiring where you have the fuse panel and you have all those relays sitting in there and they all get grounded through the switch is that when I flip the switch here, what happens is the current is not having any reason to go through this resistive both the resistor as well as the diode, it has a perfect straight path to ground already if you were to wire it up one to one. Now the relay works, the relay works great, it works just the same as it should in the other situation, however that indicator light does not work. And that's what I'm talking about when I say these switches can't make the fog lights work. The fog lights will work, but they'll be no better than just using the OEM switch without the indicator. Now we're going to rearrange this one as well and you're going to see in what, why this is, what's going on here fundamentally, is that, now notice the difference, is that these are actually in series. If we were to remove this ground here and try to bypass it, these elements are now in series. So we have the relay, and then we have, if we remove the ground there, we try to force current through the resistor diode combo, but notice the voltage and therein lies the problem. Let's take this example of two of the same bulb, one in parallel and one in series. In parallel, both of the bulbs get the full 12 volts, and because the resistance decreases with two loads in parallel, the overall current through the circuit is increased. Whereas in series, you have those resistance values are going to add up, so there's going to be more restriction, going to be less current going through the circuit, and the voltage is going to get split between the two bulbs to where each is only getting 6 volts. 
So therein lies your problem. If you plan on using these switches how they're intended for an aftermarket accessory where you're going to be wiring in a relay downstream somewhere in the engine bay with a wire leading to it and then powering that switch from a fuse in that little compartment area, then that's going to work just fine. But if you plan on trying to control OEM accessories using one of these indicator switches, Unfortunately, because of that series configuration that occurs with having that relay upstream, it's just not going to work. You can see this shown pretty clearly in the voltages and current flowing through the relay in this example. We have 70 milliamps going through the relay over here on the aftermarket parallel setup, and that's working just fine. But we only have 3 milliamps going through in the series setup where if you're trying to make this work with an OEM accessory and that's not enough to engage that coil, just not enough current to create that magnetic field. Now you're probably thinking, well, what if I just hook this up to that ground as we were discussing a little bit earlier in wiring? Well, then you lose the whole point of having the switch, which is the indicator light. It's no better than just using the switch you already have. And so could you modify the PCB of this switch? Remove that resistor, the 2.7 ohm, kilo ohm, Resistor, yeah, it's possible it would work, but if there's still so much of a voltage drop in the diode that you still have that restricted current flow, the relay may or may not work. If you try this out, let me know. I'd love to hear from somebody who does. But to me, this sort of hack just doesn't seem worth it when reliability is the most important thing in an electrical circuit. You don't want to be chasing problems. So let's transition over to switching the bulbs out as they burn out or if you just want to change the color, for example, in the OEM switches. Replacing the bulbs in the switches. This is a unique switch because it has two bulbs since they're indicators. However, most of these switches just have a single bulb that goes into the housing and fires backwards. Now this is important because these cool little LED bulbs, you, I wanted to like them and I do like LED technology. However, some of them are actually too wide to physically fit. And then the other problem is since they're firing straight in, hardly any light gets out. I'll put up a photo. It just really does not work. LEDs are good for a lot of things, but not for this application. So as far as incandescent bulbs go, there is this one here. And then I'll show you the one inside this switch. Here's how you take one out. You take a small screwdriver, go like that. And then you're going to probably want a little hook and pick set, something like that. Then it comes out, no big deal. So this is the stained glass. It's actually orange. And then this one just is clear, but it has a little sock on it. And as we're gonna find out later, you can change the color of this one by taking the sock off, which if you have an original bulb, this is one of the original ones, which I've broken, but I would highly recommend that you be super careful because you can see here I actually tore the little sock trying to take it off of this one. This one I was able to get it off by undoing the bulb, kind of like a Christmas light, and then taking this pick and super gently taking this little sock off. It, they do tear. I thought it'd be strong, like some sort of really strong rubber, but it, you can see that one just tore off. So this one is pretty loose, but what I would do with the original ones off your dead bulbs if you're going to reuse them is go around like this and just peel it off just ever so slowly. And then you can see this is the same thing as this. However, this one uses a clear bulb and this one uses a stained glass bulb. And then if you want to take this and put it on here like this, there's just nothing to it. It goes right on. And then when you want to go ahead and put one into the switch, you just put it in. Polarity doesn't matter on incandescence and screw it in and that's that. Got the very pretty orange dash here. I've always been partial to orange as well as red. Not so much of a fan of blue, but hey, let me know in the comments what your favorite dash color is. Here we've got the stained glass bulb in the fog light switch. We've got the bulb with the little sock cover with the, its original cover, and then we've got the LED aftermarket toggle switch. As you can see when we dim them, the LED doesn't dim quite as soon as the incandescence, which is expected, but they all do dim reasonably well. It's hard to pick up on camera, but the bulb here with this sock the, that it came with is not as orange as everything else. 
This stained bulb is nice and orange, and this DRL switch, the aftermarket switch, is nice and orange, but this switch is not. However, I'm going to show you, we're going to switch it out with the factory sock, and we're going to get it to the correct color. And here's that switched out with the sock that came off of one of the dead OEM bulbs. I know, again, it's hard to tell, but that is a lot more orange, and it matches much better with the rest of the dash. However, it is just a slight bit dimmer because that OEM sock is a little bit darker, so a little bit less light gets out through the bulb. So to wrap up our discussion in the dark, real quickly, if I was just switching out one bulb and the rest were still good, I would either get an OEM bulb from the dealer or I would get the covered style bulb and use the sock off of the dead bulb to get the perfect color match. However, if you were switching out all of your bulbs, like on an older truck where they're all dead already and the previous owner never kept up with it, honestly this stained bulb matches better with the gauge cluster. It doesn't match quite as well with the other controls but it matches really well with the gauge cluster and it matches the aftermarket bulb better. So the aftermarket switch, I should say. So I would honestly get that stained bulb if it was my choice to switch them all out. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I wanted to make a video because I didn't find this information online. I just found a bunch of forum posts with guys either saying one, this doesn't work with hooking up to the original accessories or two, just guys saying, oh, you're just dumb, you know, a relay is a relay, there's nothing, you gotta, how would you not know how to do this? Well, unfortunately, it didn't turn out to be as simple as some of those guys thought, did it? So, anyways, hope you enjoy, like, subscribe, you know, whatever symbol that's supposed to be, uh, and get subscribed because we're going to be adding the steering wheel buttons for the radio, we're going to be doing all types of stuff, got videos out there, I did a tailgate, uh, reinforcement panel, so you don't want to miss it. All right, thank you. Bye.